The stark expanse of the lunar surface stretched beneath the armored boots of the Lunar Shield Marines as they patrolled the dusty plains. Their exosuits hummed quietly, a symphony of technology against the silence of space. Through visors that gave the bleak landscape a hint of artificial blue sky, the soldiers' eyes darted nimbly, searching for anything amiss on their routine sweep. Private Marcus Leary's suit chafed slightly at the neck, a familiar itch that he'd learned to ignore over his months on the moon. He could almost feel Earth's distant pull, a gentle reminder of the home that seemed both so close yet impossibly far away. To Marcus, the moon was less a celestial body and more a frontier outpost, a stepping stone to the stars. The squad's comms channel crackled to life, slicing through the monotonous whir of their life support systems. Report, Private Leary. All quiet. Captain Elena Mora's voice resonated with the weight of her legacy, a family famed for their military service. Just the usual dust devils, Captain. Marcus replied, his gaze sweeping the barren horizon. At that moment, the silence shattered like glass under a mallet. Alarms blared, puncturing the comms with bursts of static and urgency. Marcus's pulse quicked, adrenaline coursing through him. Incoming alert, he announced. The squad's tactical overlay blinked alive with red icons, positions of an unknown fleet advancing rapidly. Captain Mora's voice cut through the chaos with precision. Status report now. Ma'am, fleet signatures are unrecognized. Approaching perimeter Echo Bravo 5. High velocity, possible hostile intent, responded Lieutenant Singh, the detachment's communications officer. The lunar base, a sprawling complex of domes and turrets embedded in the dusty crust, immediately came alive. Hatches sealed, weapons powered up, and every available screen filled with data streams analyzing the threat. Eyes up, Marines, Captain Mora commanded, her tone as hard as the plasteel armor encasing her body. We've got unknown ships on an intercept course. This is not a drill, I repeat, not a drill. Moved to defensive positions. The Marines snapped to action, the serenity of their moonlit patrol instantly forgotten. They bounded across the surface in low gravity leaps, each stride propelling them toward entrenched positions. Marcus felt the weight of his rifle, a reassuring presence in his gloved hands. He scanned the dark sky above, knowing that somewhere in that abyss, the future of the lunar colony was hurtling toward them. Captain Mora, at the forefront, realized the gravity of the situation. They were the first line of defense, the shield against the unknown aggressors. As her eyes locked onto the dark shapes beginning to pepper the starry backdrop, she made a silent vow. The Lunar Shield Marines would stand firm. Humanity's sentinel on this cold, silent world would not falter, not on her watch. With that, the tranquil expanse of the moon was about to become a theater of war, as unknown enemies bore down upon the unsuspecting Marines. The first chapter of their desperate stand was about to be written in fire and steel against the canvas of the lunar frontier. The moon's horizon erupted in flashes of devastating light, crater edges crumbling as defensive outposts buckled under the relentless assault. Captain Elena Mora, a figure cast from legends of war, her armor emblazoned with the insignia of the Lunar Shield Marines, stood resolute as the clamor of battle filled the comms. Bravo team, form up. Delta, I need suppressive fire on my mark. She barked orders with a clarity that pierced the cacophony. The Marines, disciplined and precise, executed her commands with the urgency of those acquainted with death's swift approach. Plasma rounds hissed as they cut through the vacuum, creating brief auroras against the black backdrop of space. The whine of railguns followed, projectiles launching with a force that echoed through their suits. Marcus Leary felt the lunar soil compress beneath him with each bombardment, vibrations traveling up his legs, a grim drumbeat to the symphony of war. He peered over the edge of the trench, watching flashes illuminate the enemy, faceless adversaries intent on the annihilation of all he had sworn to protect. 
Shadows danced as the marines slipped from trench to barricade, their movements swift and predatory. There was no space for fear amidst the relentless need to act, every moment a sliver of time borrowed from fate itself. Captain Mora, taking position at the front line, gazed unflinchingly into the heart of the chaos. She had been born into a dynasty of soldiers, and it was a heritage she carried like a standard into the fray. Stay sharp, she instructed, her voice steel-wrapped in velvet. They're trying to flank us. Her eyes didn't miss the flicker of movement, a ghost in the throes of destruction bearing down on their left flank. Flank team, on me, she commanded, and like a wave, her marines converged to meet the threat. The enemy was relentless, a mail-in stream that sought to erode the marines' resolve. Yet for every line broken, the marines formed another, every soldier a bastion against the tide. Their movements were poetry, each stance and shot a verse in the story of their unwavering stand. Amidst the firestorm, Marcus's weapon malfunctioned, a trivial piece of metal causing an eclipse in his role in the battle. His mind raced, options darting like frenzied fish as he set to work, fingers deft despite the bulk of his gloves. The repair was a mere moment, but in the heat of conflict, it yawned wide like a chasm. He re-engaged, his weapon's voice joining the chorus once more, the notes it sang deadly and true. The Marine's strength was not just in their armor or weapons, it was in their resilience, in the unyielding grip they held on their duty. As the dust swirled and the earth hung silently above, the Lunar Shield Marines carved their resolve into the annals of history. This moon, their charge, would not fall while breath still filled their lungs. Captain Mora's battalion was the shield, unbroken and steadfast, and in its shadow the lunar colony would weather this storm of fire and iron. In the humming command centre, buried deep beneath the moon's pockmarked surface, Captain Elena Mora stood amidst a hive of screens and consoles, the stench of ozone and burning circuitry lingering in the recycled air. The strip lighting flickered intermittently as another shockwave from the surface assailed the base, a constant reminder of the siege thundering above. Data scrolled across her vision, revealing the nature of their foe, a revelation that hit with the force of a physical blow. The attacking forces were not alien, not unknown. They were human, remnants of the lost colony of New Athens, thought to have perished in the void decades ago. Faces on the screen, wrought with the hard lines of survival, were the faces of brethren turned foe. Private Leary watched the captain's back stiffen, her reaction a physical representation of the turmoil he felt churning in his guts. What's the plan, Captain? His voice broke the tension that wrapped the room like a shroud. We? Mora's voice was calm, resolute, despite the tempest that raged within her. We do our duty. But as the Marines girded themselves for the confrontation with ghosts from their own kind, an insidious breach materialized from within. Surveillance feeds flickered, turning to static, and a sinking realization dawned. The enemy was not only at the gates, but within the walls. Sabotage. Alarms sounded anew, this time from the base's core. Reactors fluctuated, their steady thumping heartbeat becoming erratic, a staccato of instability that threatened to unleash destruction from within. Marcus clambered through the maze of corridors alongside his squad, each step taking them closer to the source of the betrayal. The Marines moved with a lethal grace, their training automatic. With every checkpoint secured, every shadow probed, the tension wound tighter, a spring that threatened to snap. They found the saboteur, a figure clad in a Marine's uniform, but stripped of any semblance to the code they all held sacred. In the icy eyes of the traitor, they saw not remorse, but conviction, a belief that cut deeper than the betrayal itself. Hands trained for war coaxed submission from the insurgent, their grip ironclad, unyielding, as much to contain their own turmoil as to restrain the enemy's agent. 
With the saboteur contained and the immediate threat inside the base neutralized, the Marines steeled themselves once more. They were the bulwark, the line that could not be crossed. As Mora led the forces outward, the Marines' will galvanized into a unified front, pushing back with a renewed vigor. This conflict was more than a battle for territory. It was a struggle for the soul of humanity's presence in the stars. The Marines faced not just the external onslaught of their forsaken kin, but the realization that their war was as much against the specters of their past as it was the flesh and blood adversaries before them. Captain Mora, in the thick of her battalion, her visage set in stone, pressed forward. Every command she gave, every order she barked, became an affirmation of their purpose. The Lunar Shield Marines, with their feet rooted in moon dust and their hearts bound by duty, would defend their post against both the external assault and the enemy within. Their defense was a grim dance, their strategy woven between every laser burst and rail gun shot, the dance of survival on the knife edge of the void. The battlefield was a cataclysmic orchestra, and Captain Elena Mora was its relentless conductor, orchestrating a counter-assault on a lunar satellite critical to the rebels' strategy. Private Marcus Leary was at her side, pulse pounding a rhythm in his temples. The satellite loomed ahead, an orb of metal and dust clouded by the debris of warfare. They advanced under a barrage of fire, suits scarred by near misses, their movements a frantic ballet amid chaos. Shrapnel danced around them, a deadly pirouette of metal and regolith, as they advanced with unflagging determination. Yet fate, that capricious force, had laid a snare along their path. A burst of energy cascaded from insurgent railguns, a wall of fury aimed to obliterate, Mora's instinct screamed, and she flung herself toward the nearest boulder, her call sign, a beacon, blinking furiously. The marines followed suit, an echo of her urgency in their steps. But for Mora, the escape was a ruse. A hidden device sprung to life, the air crackling as an energy net enveloped her, dragging her away from the fight, her marines plunging into disarray as their leader vanished from sight. The void where Mora had once stood was as palpable as the vacuum around them. The marines felt the absence like a missing limb, an ache that pierced through the numbness of the relentless fray. Amidst the unceasing barrage, Marcus felt the weight of her absence, a burden that settled on his shoulders, heavy and unfamiliar. The marines faltered, their seamless unity fractured without the captain's voice to guide them, her tactical genius to lead. Losses mounted as the tide of battle shifted. Each marine grappled with the gut-wrenching reality. Captain Mora captured. The outpost's walls seemed to tremble with the impact of their morale, crashing to unseen depths. Yet within this crucible of despair, a spark kindled. Marcus's eyes met those of his fellow soldiers, a silent accord passing between them. They may have lost their captain, but not their purpose. The marines regrouped, heads bowed against the storm of enemy fire, each step a testament to their resolve. The lunar base, battered and besieged, stood vulnerable yet defiant. Its defenders, though reeling from the loss of Mora, found within themselves the legacy she had embodied, a legacy of indomitable spirit, a will to endure when all seemed lost. In the shadow of the satellite, under the gaze of earth above, they rallied, a fortress of flesh and blood amidst the desolation. The front line was their home, and there they would stand, unbroken, embodying the spirit of their captured leader, their moral compass recalibrated in the face of overwhelming adversity. The Marines' stand, amidst the rubble and ruin of their battlefield, was not one of defeat, but of simmering defiance, a quiet strength gathering in the spaces between their heartbeats. The moon for now lay vulnerable, but the marine spirit, much like the dusty ground beneath them, would not yield. 
Amid the dimness of a makeshift cell, Captain Elena Mora's fingers worked with quiet determination, dismantling the energy shackles that bound her. The stoic facade she projected to her captors belied the whirl of activity in her mind. She had gleaned critical intel, snippets of conversation heard between the rebels that spoke of their plans, their weaknesses. Escape was not just a hope, it became an inevitability. When the opportunity struck, a momentary lapse in the guard's vigilance, she seized it with the ferocity of a caged animal finally set free. Her movements were silent, precise, a mirage in the shadows as she slipped from her confinement and out into the chaos that awaited. Back on the battlefield, the Marines hunkered down against the relentless siege, fighting with a ferocity born of desperation. Private Marcus Leary, his armor pocked by the scars of combat, led a contingent to secure a critical defensive point. Each shot he fired was a message, a declaration that they were not yet defeated. Then, cutting through the din of war, Mora's voice crackled across the squad's comms, a beacon cutting through fog-tight despair. Marines, she called out, the strength in her voice belying her ordeal. Prepare to turn the tide. With Mora's intel, the Marines orchestrated a daring counter-offensive. Under the cloak of regolith kicked up by artillery, they manoeuvred into position, the moon's stark terrain, offering both the harshness of an open grave and the strategic advantage they desperately needed. Mora rejoined her battalion, her presence a palpable force that swelled their hearts. Together, they laid their ambush with meticulous care, every marine a shadow stitched into the lunar landscape. The rebels, confident in their push against a leaderless enemy, did not anticipate the trap. As they advanced, the ground beneath their feet erupted, pre-positioned charges detonating in a symphony of destruction, the marines emerging like vengeful wraiths from the dust and chaos. The tide of battle shifted. Each marine became an instrument of retribution, their resolve hardened by their captain's return, their actions exact and unforgiving. The rebels faltered, their lines crumbling under the cunning of the counter-strike. The marines exploited every fissure, every moment of hesitation. In a final confrontation, they cornered the rebel leader, a figurehead whose capture would seal the rebellion's fate. Mora, standing tall amidst the dwindling echoes of battle, faced the defiant adversary. The revealing light of conflict faded from their helmets, revealing eyes that held the reflection of earth, jewel-like, mirroring the cost of their strife. The lunar base, scarred yet sovereign, exhaled the breath it had been holding. With the leader in their grasp, the story that unfurled from his unwilling lips promised more than the end of a battle. It whispered of a greater conflict within the colonies, tendrils that reached further than they had ever imagined. But for now, against all odds, they had secured victory, turning the rebel tide back upon itself with the shrewdness and might of the Lunar Shield Marines. They stood amidst the silence that followed, victorious, the gravity of what they had achieved and what was still to come, settling over them like the first fragile rays of Earth's dawn kissing the lunar surface. In the aftermath of their harrowing victory, the silence of the lunar landscape was filled with the somber activities of the Marines. They moved with a heavy reverence, gathering their fallen comrades, their exosuits stained with the dust and residue of battle. The Marines erected monuments to the sacrifices made, simple markers under the earth's pale glow, casting long, somber shadows on the regolith. Captain Elena Mora stood among her troops, her helmet under her arm, revealing a visage marked with the fatigue of leadership and the toll of conflict. She watched as Private Marcus Leary carefully folded a flag, the gesture of final salute to a brother-in-arms. Their victory was not without cost, every loss a weight upon their conscience. But there was work to be done. With meticulous care, the Marines began fortifying their defences, welding metal plates and calibrating sensors, transforming the lunar base into a stronghold that would withstand future onslaughts.
They worked in silence, yet a sense of unity thrummed in their midst, the bond of shared adversity, a robust scaffolding for their collective resolve. Mora walked the perimeter, her eyes taking in the extensive network of trenches and bulwarks that now scarred the moon's surface. Her presence brought a quiet confidence, a reminder that they remained unbroken. As the earth rose over the horizon, its blue expanse a stark contrast to the moon's desolation, there was a moment of reflection. The marines, their visors up, turned their faces skyward. They saw their home, a reminder of what they fought for, peace, stability, and the continuation of humanity's reach into the stars. It was a poignant symmetry, the peace of the earthly sphere viewed from their battered bastion. Captain Mora, alongside her marines, embodied the spirit of those who came before, the echoes of their ancestors' resilience written in the lines of their determined expressions. The moon stood peaceful once more, a tranquility hard-earned and fiercely defended. Marcus Leary, looking at the captain, saw not just a superior, but the embodiment of their core, their ethos. The Lunar Shield Marines, the name was more than designation, it was a promise, a vow, and they had upheld it. As the lunar day gave way to night and earthshine illuminated their faces, the marines took a collective breath. Together they faced the vastness of space and the mysteries it held, their vigilance unyielding. Theirs was a stand not just for today but for all tomorrows, a silent oath that beneath the ever-watching eyes of Earth, the moon would remain steadfast and protected under the watch of its marines. If you enjoyed this content, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel for more awesome videos coming your way.